The current crisis in Ukraine maps pretty well onto the Purim story. Think about it, the threat to annihilate an entire culture and absorb it into a larger empire. The power-hungry Putin would be the Haman in this story. And of course, President Zelensky is the Esther who has been waiting in the wings until the moment for her leadership to beckon, stepping up into the line of fire. Her inner strength and her willingness to lay down her life for the sake of her people is very much what has captured the imagination of the world as we watch President Zelensky speak out against tyranny for the freedom and survival of his people. And to the American diplomats offering him flights to safety, he said, I don't need a ride, I need ammunition. Esther would have been safe, hidden in the palace, but she put herself in harm's way to save her people. There is a character who shows up in the Purim story for just a brief moment, who is on the sidelines, but ultimately becomes a key figure in the demise of Haman and the prevailing of the Jewish people over evil. And that is Harvona. Harvona, who is simply identified as Echad min hasarisim lifnei hamelech, one of the eunuchs in attendance before the king. And he happens to be present just as Haman's plot is revealed. And he inserts himself into the scene, speaking up before the king, just at the right moment. As the king is getting furious at Haman because Esther just revealed his plot, Harvona steps in and says, Gam hine ha'etz asher asa Haman. And also, here are the gallows that Haman made, le Mordechai, intended for Mordechai, asher dibertov al hamelech, Harvona says. Remember, Mordechai, who has shown himself to be an ally of the king. And the king responds simply to this information, vayomer hamelech, tuluhu alav, hang him on it. And because of the interjection of Harvona, they eliminate Haman. Harvona's name does not appear at all in the Megillah, except for that one moment. But he is a large presence in terms of the way that we refer to the story of Purim generations later, and the way we celebrate good, failing over evil. In fact, in the rabbinic texts, in the Shulchan Aruch itself, codifying the halachot, the laws of Purim, it says, Tzarich sheyomar, a person must say on Purim, Arur Haman, cursed is Haman, Baruch Mordechai, blessed is Mordechai, cursed is Zeresh, blessed is Esther, cursed are all those who worship idols, blessed are all of Israel. These are key core components of the, the, the story of Purim. And then it adds, one must say, Vegam Charvona Zachur Latov, and Charvona too. May he be remembered for good. And we sing this line in that liturgical song at the end of the Megillah, in Shoshanat Yaakov. We say, Vegam charvona zachur latov, may he be remembered for good. He's up there with Mordechai and Esther, with our biggest heroes, the main players of the story. And notice this language, zachur latov, remembered for good. Who else do we mention? as Zahur Latov. Think about your Birkat Hamazon. Harachaman hu yishlach lanu et Eliyahu Hanavi Zahur Latov. May God send us Elijah the prophet, Eliyahu Hanavi Zahur Latov. The great prophet Elijah throughout rabbinic literature is referred to in this way, Eliyahu Zahur Latov. According to the Midrash, Harvona was none other than Eliyahu, appearing at just the right moment. The spirit of Eliyahu is the spirit of protection for the Jewish people. Of course, he appears on Seder night, a night when Jews were protected from the plagues surrounding them. And so what is Eliyahu? What is Harvona in this Purim story? What makes someone worthy of being Zachur Latov, remembered for good? Harvona was standing on the sidelines, observing everything that was unfolding around him. And when he saw an opportunity to act against the forces of evil, he stepped forward. Who are the Harvonas of the story of this Russian war on Ukraine that we're watching unfolding? There are so many Harvonas. 
There's the anonymous man at the southern port of Berdyansk who was seen on social media clearing a landmine from a road with his bare hands, and that video was viewed more than 10 million times, as have the videos of many individuals in Ukraine taking up arms to stand up to their oppressors. Havrona is also the mother of an 11-year-old Ukrainian boy who sent her son to travel alone for nearly 700 miles to Slovakia with not much more than his passport and a telephone number of relatives written on his hand. And she stayed behind in Ukraine to care for her elderly mother and is grateful to the strangers who ensured that her son safely reached his relatives in Slovakia. And the Kharvonas are the Israeli medical delegation assisting at the Ukrainian border. In fact, medical and social services from a myriad of countries around the world. And the Kharvonas are every single person who donates a few dollars to Ukrainian relief. Every one of them is a hero in story. Of course, we can turn aside, we can close our eyes, we can say this doesn't affect us directly, or we can all become a Harvona, that minor character who becomes a hero for stepping up, for speaking out, for choosing to have a larger role in the story. This Shabbat is Shabbat Zachor, the Shabbat of remembrance, when we remember the sin of Amalek and all Amaleks in the world, those who use their power to take advantage of those who are vulnerable. We know that Zachor in our tradition is not only an injunction to remember, but to act on that memory. We have too much collective memory to stand to the side. May we be inspired to rise to the occasion of this moment, to know that when we look back at this period of time, we will be one of those Zachor Latov. When we remember this moment, we will remember ourselves for good. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Every day our prayers contain pleas to God for peace. Sim Shalom Tova Uvracha Ba'olam. God, make peace, goodness, and blessing for us and for the entire world. Every Kaddish ends with Ose Shalom Bimromav. God, make peace among the heavens, who Yaase Shalom Aleinu, and also on us, Ve'al Kol Yisrael, and for all Israel. And many movements add the words Ve'al Kol Yoshve Tevel, and for all of those who inhabit God's earth. Those sentiments have never been more necessary, sadly, than they have been for the last couple of weeks. And so this week, I offer a beautiful Israeli song made famous by the great Yoram Gaon, Lo Teda Milchama, May Never Again Israel or Anywhere Else No War. This was from a performance with the Jerusalem Symphony in 2018, and it is so moving and so poignant that I offer it this week. Lo Teda, May We Never Again No War. Shabbat Shalom. Oh, 
Thank you. 